Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back into the Buster Show. It is my pleasure to introduce sports icon, Lion Club, and entire project co-founder, Alexi Yovanov. Welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you very much for having me on, Buster. And you absolutely nailed that pronunciation there of, of my surname. It's tricky for a lot of people, but you just got it down straight away, man. Thank you. It's a oh. pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me on. I've messed up a lot of names in my time, so <laughs> just uh, you, you were one of the few that I didn't. Um, but thank, thank you for coming on. Uh, obviously, I wanted to give a little bit of background context as to your project, uh, one of the reasons we're doing this podcast, um, and, and obviously talk overall NFTs. But first, how did you first get into nfts how did you discover the space was it crypto that led you into nfts or, or how did that work yeah for me it was it was it was definitely crypto that, that led me into the nft space and i remember I, I remember you know reading about bitcoin years and years and years ago and it was um well years and years ago but like this space is so fast moving but um you know, about 10 years ago or whatever it was. Um, and yeah, I just remember thinking oh, how interesting it was. It's such an interesting concept. And I even remember setting up um, a little, you know, I, had, I used to have like little Bitcoin miners going on my machine on just my normal kind of desktop. You know, you can't do that these days. You need, you need yeah. so much more power to do it these days. Um, so, so yeah, that's kind of, I think that was my road into definitely Bitcoin was my road into the, the crypto stuff and um, obviously Ethereum followed and all the kind of amazing projects that are built on that and all the other blockchains that have followed as well. So um, <clears throat> NFT wise, uh, you know, I was paying attention from the time of, of crypto kitties back in the day. Um, and, you know, one thing's led to another and it's just a complete snowball effect and everything moves so quickly here and it's just an exciting space to be in. 100%. And we'll get into, you know, crypto kitties and flow and the significance of flow to you guys uh, in a little bit. But how did the sports icon Lions Club get started? And just the idea of creating these NFTs around, uh, around these top icons? Yeah, so, um, so we got sports icon um, that started probably last um uh, June, July, the company was founded in August last year. And really it was founded with the thesis of bringing um, fans and super fans close to their sporting heroes and close to their sporting icons. Um, and how we wanted to deliver that was through the mechanism of NFTs. But we also wanted to build into it cinematic quality content. So by creating bespoke cinematic quality content with these athletes, going direct to the athletes, um, not having to kind of deal with some, you know, the, go direct to the athletes and, that, you know, they're, they're the IP rights holders for, for themselves. Um, you know, showcasing their lives, their inspirations, um, you know, how did they make it in, in the sport that they are? What was their mentality like? Um, and, you know, display their skills and physical attributes on, on the court or, or, you know, wherever their place of work is as well. So, um, you know, to do that, we've got very top quality directors in. It's, it's you know, they're going to be cinematically filmed um, and that, you know, the delivery mechanism is nine chapters per athlete. Each chapter is broken down into a further three NFTs, um, and that will kind of that that's how it will be delivered to to the fans and to the community yeah cool and then so i know you're you're doing all this stuff for individual athletes and individual people but then there's also the lion club Is exactly two, two yeah. seven the lion club's the oldest thing if i'm not mistaken how no, the not, lion club is the the newest thing it's the newest thing so yeah what what is sort of the difference for people that are, are looking at at all of it yeah so sports icon really is the the, the the overarching element and it's founded from uh, a love of sport um essentially so everything that we do is, is for the love of sport and for the love of sports fans um i've been brought you know i was i'm half greek i'm half english so i was born in um i was born in greece but i've grown up in england 
Greece is predominantly a basketball loving country. England is football, or as we don't like to call it, soccer. Um, so, you know, I, I, I know the feeling of all these different sports in kind of very, very close, close hand and, and in different worlds, uh, different countries rather, we're all on the same planet. Um, so that was the overarching kind of uh, ambition of sports. I can, the, the, the Lion Club really uh, is a project that we brought in to bring um, an extra element of community into what we're doing an extra element of utility um, and just to bring more people into this, just to create a wider community uh, in the NFT space with sports really, because sports fans, um, you know, we're a close knit community as well. Even though every now and then we might fall out with teams that, that we might not get on get with. We I all love the sport and most people love lots of different sports as well. So, but we, yeah, I, I mean, the utility part of us, part of it is really important to us. So um, yes, there will absolutely be utility in the sports icon, this bespoke cinematic film stuff that we, that we produce as our kind of icon drops, the journeys of the athletes. But as well, we wanted to bring even, even more utility and that is also a cornerstone of, of the Lion Club. And so on, uh, on Tuesday, just gone, um, Chris and I met with six Lion Club holders who had won a um, basically a, a raffle, a competition you know, to come and watch the England international game at Wembley uh, in a box. It was the first time we'd met them, um, and it was just absolutely incredible to meet to meet some of the community face to face on the first of November. Um, tonight we'll be in, in New York that week. Chris is the other co-founder. Mm -hmm. And 15 um, Lion Club NFT holders will be watching uh, the Knicks play the Raptors at Madison Square Gardens from, from, from one of the Lexus suites there. So it's that kind of utility that we want to bring into it. There's more cup finals coming next year. There's Super Bowls. There's a World Cup. There's a lot more coming from us. Absolutely. Makes sense. I love that. You know, one of the things that I, I always say for people who are you know, just getting into NFTs and, and really don't know much is look for the projects that have utility, because mm. if it all goes to zero, at least you still have that, right? Yeah. And as we know, you know, 99% of projects don't work out. Um, but, you know, the 1% that do are the, I mean, the craziest things that you see written about in the New York Times and, and everywhere, like the punks of the world and, and some newer projects that actually have good teams behind them and um, are actually providing utility. I think one of the big things that utility says too is that the team is investing in the project longer term. They're willing to put some of the money that they're getting from it back into the project because yeah. they think that that will fuel it long term. So I think utility apart from like the actual utility aside, having utility speaks very, very well on behalf of those NFT projects. Um, yeah, absolutely. And I guess I didn't, you know, I only mentioned the, the two most recent things that have happened. There are also utility in terms of we have, I don't know how much into soccer you are, but we had um, Luis Figo, who's an, an absolute legend of the game. Yeah, came I saw. Up. He did a live Q&A um, with the community over Zoom. And we got people onto the stage to speak to Luis Figo one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we've done similar things with Roberto Carlos. Uh, we've got um, a, I don't think it's been announced yet, actually. It nearly slipped out there. Uh, we've got an NBA. <laughs> we've got an NBA uh, athlete coming in uh, towards the end of this month. And we've got something absolutely incredible coming up with one of the best uh the best boxes the world has ever seen as well so wow. um and, and you know it's about delivering that utility on online but also in real life as well for us well that's all very exciting um congrats on all, on all of that now this partnership with flow uh obviously you mentioned crypto kitty before and being into that obviously their more famous product now nba top shot um and and soon nfl and and ufc and all these other different things why partner with flow and this is the other side less the icons club more you know or or is it a combination of both so i mean it's 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 that's um it's it's not 
how's the right way to answer this? Do you know what you've just done? You, you've made me think about bridges uh, in, in the future. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, what, what we have is the, the, the Sports Hack and Lion Club, um, and that's kind of Ethereum-based. And then we are, we are obviously building out on Flow for our main platform. So Flow for us is what the guys at Dapper have done has just been absolutely incredible over the last few years, not to mention, uh, you know, I talk about the last few years, but even the last few months, the leaps that we've seen um, have just been absolutely incredible. They might not be available to everyone to see, but because we work with them uh, um, closely, we, you know, they're, they're very, very supportive of us. We, we can see the leaps and bounds that are going on that I guess, I guess most people don't. Um, yeah, and it's the premier space for, for sports, we think. Um, it's gasless, it's quick, it's purposely built for NFTs uh, and gaming, and it just, um, it just makes, makes complete sense, really. Um, we are standing on the shoulders of giants, so to speak, and why, why, wouldn't, you, why wouldn't you kind of take that opportunity? Um, if, the rest of the, if the rest of the dynamic fits, which it does, um, you know, this is the, the perfect place for us to be, I think. And then we've also got, um, so Dapper are also being very good in promoting um, companies that are building on Flow. Um, obviously, they want us to succeed. They want everyone building on Flow to succeed. And they are having a Flow Fest, Flow Festival that starts, what's the date today? It's the 14th. So that starts tomorrow and that will run for a month. Wow. That'll be... Yeah, so that'll be Dapper kind of throwing a bit of spotlight, a bit of PR and um, a bit of attention, um, the way of companies building on, on flow and, and will be one of them. So it's, um, yeah, it's, they've been incredible. That's very cool. Um, now, where, where, where do you think we are in the uh, timeline of NFTs. Obviously, they've been around since 2017, 16-ish, something yeah. like that. Um, yeah. You know, the earliest, the uh, ancient artifacts and NFTs are like 2015, 16. And then yeah. like the, you know, holy grails are mostly 2017, right? But where do you think we are on that timeline of NFTs? I know Coinbase just announced that they're going to be adding in capabilities to have NFTs over a million signups in 24 hours, which is mm. more than, you know, two times as many as OpenSea has had at their peak. Flow is yeah. announcing new sports, tons of different platforms doing the same. Where do you think we are in the timeline of NFTs? Like pretty much right at the very beginning we've yeah. got we are we are yeah i i think we we we're just kind of scratching the surface i think um obviously crypto kitties to now um you know and um other projects from, from that sort of 2016 2017 around then you know like moon cats and, and things like that um we are we are just i think we're just at the beginning really we're, we're just scratching the surface really of, of what can be done um every day every week there's something new that comes out there's something um with really really kind of excellent utility um and kind of there's so many wonderful people working in this, in the space as well and i've i've been on calls where i'm um you know i'm working with some some artists on a project one is based in new zealand another one's based in mexico um another one's over in um in you know a couple in holland and it's just it just brings uh everyone together i think these kind of projects um so yeah i think we, we've got such a such a long way to go and so much more evolving to do and i'm just excited to, to be here um as anyone else in the space is i'm sure no it's it's totally true the collaboration and rewarding of artists and community you know one of the first things that you mentioned is it's pretty unparalleled. Like I'm a big physical co card collector, as you can see in my background. But yeah. uh, that which is, your favorite, which is your favorite one there, Buster? Oh, right behind me. It's a lot yeah. of stuff. This is this is a cool one though. Speaking of sports icons, is a Roger Federer signed rookie. Oh wow, that's pretty smart. That's cool. And these are these are all super random though. Um, yeah. yeah, some fun stuff. But uh, that that sort of community can't exist in the same way because it's not digitally native right mm, that's one of the exactly. first things that that brought me into nfts and i think physical is great too and i think people are always 
you know, curious whether uh, digital is going to negatively affect physical. And mm. the answer is no, they help each other because it's one group of collectibles. Collectibles yeah. are on the rise and mm. people are realizing that collectibles are a better investment than, you know, clothing and certain things that the second it's like a, like how cars used to be right where you drive yeah, it off yeah. a lot and it loses 60 percent of its value collectibles yeah. are better because they're just as fun mm. and oftentimes just as good of a flex as that clothing is but yeah you know oftentimes they can appreciate and you get all these benefits of community and like if you buy a gucci shirt nothing against gucci but yeah you buy a gucci shirt you don't get any utility you don't get any you definitely aren't selling it for more unless you're literally never wearing it. There's no community that comes with that Gucci shirt. Like, no. I think it's all beneficial to physical, digital, uh, collectibles, uh, crypto, all, all of it is uh, being lifted. Yeah. The same. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think, I think they kind of go hand in hand. And I mean, in terms of the, the, the physical artifacts, um, I mean, that, that, that's a one of one. You know, I, I'm not. I'm not going to stop buying things like that just because. You know, you, you can have both. Both both can coexist as well. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, you're right. That that online community is unparalleled. Really. Um, I, don't, I don't get to be in a community just because I, I bought this here. Uh, but I can be in a community and speak to like-minded people by um, buying a you know a sports like online club NFT. And then in terms of the, the physical side of things, in terms of the clothing, I think there's some quite interesting things happening in the space with the clothing as well, to, to be honest. Um, I've seen a few quite interesting projects recently, um, embedding NFTs in clothes, et cetera. That's gonna be, that's gonna be yeah. Apple Watches we, especially. We had a really, really, really interesting uh, call the other day um, with, with a company that was doing that. And it, it, that also looks phenomenal. Um, but yeah, I think in terms of the physical side of things, my, uh, my wife would definitely complain that I've got too many pairs of Air Jordans filling up the, uh, the, the closet. So, so, so quite limited space wise there for sure. One, one thing I definitely want to do though, is get an Apple watch, uh, with a chain around it so that I can wear it and just put the, mm. put my favorite NFTs right there. That, yeah, absolutely. That's that's the only thing that I I, I could see myself doing. Um, mm -hmm. you know, there are there are really great NFT artists who are doing cool stuff in clothing, like uh, uh, Fawocious, who's awesome uh, artist in the space. He he's doing these custom shoes um, yeah. that are designed that have been made more popular because of the NFTs, and there is some additional, you know. Uh, both emotional value and tangible value associated to those mm. because all right now you own the only physical piece of the guy whose nfts are selling for three hundred thousand dollars you know per item it's, it's, yeah uh, it the power that some of these artists now hold from their nft success is pretty awesome it's pretty yeah. awesome yeah yeah absolutely absolutely yeah absolutely and, and credit to them really um i think it's it's been it's been amazing. It's kind of lifted, lifted that whole community to kind of a, a level that, that everyone's eyes are on them and, and you know, that they deserve it because they've just worked so hard for, they're so talented as well. Um, it's a pleasure to work with, with these people. Um, I personally, I've tried to draw, but I can, I can just about do a stick man and that makes me a bit sad. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm always very kind of, um, you know, um, I just love that the art that the people can produce. Um, I think it's absolutely incredible. Definitely. Now I'm curious just how you, how you would put it, because there are surprisingly, like when you're in the community, you don't understand how anybody that's outside of the community couldn't understand NFTs. And that switch happens fast, right? Um, to when, once you're in it, it just, there's no such thing as the outside world. But believe it or not, there are still people out there who think that clicking right click and save is equal on a crypto punk to actually <laughs> spending half a million dollars to get a floor punk. What yeah. is your message to the right click and savers of the world? 
Well, I think it, it's all about it's it's all about that ownership, isn't it? At the end of the day, it's all about the ownership. Um, anyone can kind of take a photo on the Mona Lisa of the Mona Lisa on their phone and get it printed out in bad quality and put it on their wall, but. But, you know, that, that real ownership of that piece of art is only ever going to belong to one person. Um, and on the blockchain, you, you know who that is. You know who the wallet, what, which wallet that belongs to. Um, that counts a lot for Kudos as well, as, as, as we know, as you mentioned, in terms of the flexing, et cetera. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think my message to them would be just keep your eyes out for some interesting projects. Um, check out the teams behind the projects um, and yeah, try and get in there at mint price and just, just have a go, see, see, see what happens. Yeah, I, I mean, obviously the biggest thing, the biggest difference between right-clicking and saving and buying is that one person can actually sell and make money. <laughs> well, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, Absolutely. but uh, to your point too, it, it's all about just getting in, like get mm something really cheap just so that you're uh you've experienced both sides right not having one and having one you have to try something to know whether you like it or not like yeah. anything so mm -hmm. just trying something and even if it's just getting a little bit of crypto right whatever it is um, yeah. just getting in those in those doors make a metamask you know there are so many projects that are free to mint mm -hmm. you just pay gas right? So yeah. it's a very low Ethereum cost basis. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'd recommend that that's the best way for somebody to start in NFTs is look for free mints of yeah. like, find, I mean, there, there are projects out there, like there's this one project, it's called um, On Chain Monkey. I remember somebody texted me and it was like, yo, it's is a free mint. I mean, CryptoPunks is the best example of all. Mm. CryptoPunks was free. Yeah. It was free. You just had to click claim and yeah. pay gas. And there are people who have made, and CryptoPunks has done $1.5 billion in the last year. It's absolutely insane. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an amazing project. And I think the wonderful thing about the, the NFT space is that there's, there's something for everyone, really. Um, it, it's, you know, what you like and don't like, it's all subjective, you know. Uh, there is something for it. The, the space caters for all, and um, um, yeah, there is definitely there's definitely a project out there for everyone. You just got to keep hunting and have a look around and see what interests you, and do a bit of reading behind the project, and um, and, and then take off. Just you've got to jump in. So, what have what have you found? Are the you know when you're looking at a new project, like let's say. Uh, you know, somebody's looking at the sports icon line club project. What are the things that people should look for in a project before they decide, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go get one. Well, you know, I, I can only speak personally. I, I can't really speak sort of generally for everyone, but what, what, what I would look for personally in, in these projects is, um, you know, I'd want to understand who, who is the project, what, what, who showed what, what are the projects? Who is um, who makes up the project? Um, is it is it is there a lot of transparency with it or not? Um, you know, a lack of transparency, I think, would probably be a bit of a red flag. I think you and I have probably both seen PFP projects that have been completely yeah. transparent and, and it's sorry, not transparent, and you know, a bit of a rug pull. And I just I find it you know really sad that you know, that, that does happen and that does exist. And I think that would be the, the number one thing that I would look for is who's behind it. Um, have they been successful? Have they been successful artists before or athletes or businessmen or they don't even need to have had um, success, I suppose. What they need to just be is transparent. Hey, this is who I am. This is why I'm doing this project. Um, this is why I think it's going to be great. And this is the utility, um, et cetera. So, I think that's for, for personally speaking for me that's that's one of the most important things and I think that as sports icon and and then therefore as the, the the lion club I think we're one of the most transparent projects that anyone can find out there um our names are out there um I'm on your podcast this is my face um it's kind of you know um my, my name you know I'm, I'm also up before sort of starting um sports icon 
officially uh, I was or co-founding it with Chris. I was, you know, I've, I've been a FIFA match agent working on projects all around the world for 10, 12, 15 years. So my name's on, on the FIFA website as well. Uh, and it's not, it, it's not easy to get one of those licenses and to go, you know, you jump through a lot of hoops and go through a lot of checks to get there. Imagine. So, yeah. Um, so yeah. It all comes down to transparency, man. So how do you how do you think your uh, your FIFA experience has benefited your NFT experience, or are they is there no correlation nor no crossover there? In terms of the well, I mean abs absolutely. I mean you know it's a sports icon. It's it's a sports related NFT uh, company. So uh, and obviously the Lion Club, sports icon Lion Club, um, it has helped. Undoubtedly helped because. I, I've, I've, I've taken at least a decade building up relationships with teams and athletes um, all around the world. Um, so that, that absolutely does help. I know, and even, the, even people that I don't have direct communication with, if we're kind of establishing new relationships with um, agents or agencies in the, in the US or wherever them, that might be, you know, I can, I can interact. I can speak the language, let's say. Um, it's there's there's kind of a, a different way I suppose of um, of communicating sometimes that you know that has its minutiae its little differences so yeah it's definitely it's definitely definitely helped. So you have some pretty you know just going through the uh, the sports icon website here you have some pretty incredible advisors uh, yeah. you know obviously Roham founder of Dapper Labs he's he's a friend and, and he's great uh, Chad Hurley who founded YouTube yeah. That's pretty, that's pretty incredible. Uh, yeah. Andrew Bogut, you know, NBA champ. Nas, mm -hmm. who has notoriously been uh, an outstanding investor, you know, getting yeah. projects like Coinbase uh, super early and, and others. Uh, how did you go about creating this advisory board? Because this looks like a company that's, you know, about to raise half a billion dollars based on the <laughs> lineup there. How did how did you go about picking who who's right, um, and you know what kind of benefit can guys like Chad and uh, Nas sort of bring to the table? Well, yeah, I think um, part of our process really when we when we were raising is um, who's interested in the space first and foremost, um, and who is going to be a value add so you know we we did we did turn away um investment money we didn't take every every check that was offered to us um so we were really really selective about who we wanted on board and who but who who can help us drive this company in one way or another um you know to to where it should be and you know like you said that that is a mixture of the, the bogut's the Hurley's, um, Roham's, you know, obviously been absolutely incredible. He's jumped on a, a couple of calls with us as well in the past um, with athletes that, that we were talking to as well. But then also um, people like uh, Sonny Madra, who's like a VP at Ford X, has been absolutely uh, amazing. Um, uh, Nihal Metia from ENIAC, um, Serik from Elephant. Um, they've, they've just been an absolutely amazing kind of a resource for us and support network. Um, and, and yeah, I think that's really, really important to, to a project as well, because not everyone, not everyone knows everything. So, you know, you need to be able to, to, to communicate and talk to other people as well and sort of uh, bounce ideas around. So yeah, they, they've been, they've been amazing. And then we've also been through the, the tech stars uh, sports accelerator um in Indy unfortunately we didn't I think Chris got there for the tail end of it but we've we've had a we've had this pandemic going around haven't we so um unfortunately we, we didn't make it to Indy for the main event but um but yeah the guys there have been absolutely incredible as well like Jordan Flegel and Andrew Hippert they've been they've been a great help so you've got to be very very careful just just to take not not to take every check that's going really you have to kind of pick yeah you, you, well, Absolutely. that's a fantastic position to be in. <laughs> well, start off by saying this is our strategy. Yeah. And you stick to it. 
And, and then that's just like, um, you know, if people are trading crypto to have a strategy, they stick to it. And they might get a bit nervous from time to time, but you stick to the strategy. Um, and, that, and that's that's what we need. That's what we did with our investors. So, and that's what we're doing with sports cycling. I love that. What are you most excited about in the NFT space? Well, what am I most excited about in the NFT space is our beta launch on of our platform. On Flow. <laughs> so, when it, that's on. When that's, is that tomorrow? When's this going out? Uh, tomorrow. So, <laughs> is it? Is it? Okay. Today. <laughs> it's going out today, people. This, this is live. It's happening now. Um, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I think the the, the beta launch of our platform. Um, I, I'm being very biased, um, very self centered. I appreciate that. But um, but yeah, on Saturday we're going to be on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and then, so we'll launch on on Saturday. Beta launch. We'll have pre access. Um, mint passes for Romelu Lukaku, who, if you don't know your soccer listeners, is um, the most expensive player with accum- by accumulated transfer fees in, in soccer history. Um, obviously, Messi was a one-man club, so, okay, we can't really count him in, but even more than players like Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, so he's just won the league in Italy, and he's now playing for Chelsea uh, in London. So we'll have some, um, yeah, some pre-access, uh, uh, yeah, mint passes for for Rom with some absolutely amazing utility built into them as well. I mean, the actual the actual passes are collectibles as well. At the end of the day, um, so I think the top the top level is only going to have seventy five editions available, um, and then they get first dibs, basically first entry to the to the main Lukaku drop when that comes. But also, you know, we want to continue giving utility. So they, those kind of access pass holders are going to get something every month. Every month, uh, they'll, they'll be delivered some sort of, um, they're kind of like an ultimately, an ultimate NFT or rare or common, you know, that they'll be delivered something every month according to uh, the level that they bought. And then sports is global. So we're also welcoming um, Pumas, um, onto the platform on Saturday. Um, that will be their first ever NFT drops. It's one of the biggest soccer clubs in Mexico. Um, so we're kind of very, very excited about that. And Mike Vick coming up um, on Saturday the 23rd. Um, cool. Yeah. And L- Lucha Libres, which is the the kind of the, the, mes- the wrestling, the Mexican wrestling. Um, so we've got all their kind of IP and their rights for for two years um and that's incredible it's an absolutely incredible kind of array of um really colorful stuff in there as well so um yeah that that, that's what i'm excited about buster i'm sorry to be uh selfish and just uh, no i I think those are very worthy (laughs) things of being excited about so to get to repeat saturday is this beta launch yeah this upcoming saturday if you're listening to the podcast between the day it came out and that 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 saturday And Which you should be. You should you should be listening the moment this comes out. Surely everyone I, should be alerts on the podcast is out. Let's get it on now. Hey, you're preaching to the choir here. Um, <laughs> but uh, where do people go to find it? So people will go to sportsicon.com. Simple. Great. Um, so yeah. So we're on Flow. Um, everyone's going to. We've started um, um, in the community. Um, getting people to sign up with a Blockto wallet because that's what we'll be using um, for for the transactions and people will be able to also kind of load fiat currency onto onto their Blockto wallet using MoonPay. So it's it's going to be nice and easy, easy, nice and smooth. You'll be able to pay with uh, crypto, but you'll also be able to pay uh, with fiat currency as well. Absolutely. Awesome. And what you're also going to be getting from this podcast, since it's attached to the Buster Show Utility Mics project, is your mic from this episode, uh, one of the first five guest mics ever made. So I don't know if that goes to you or the team, but it's yours. Uh, so we'll have to get an address to send that to. And, and I appreciate you guys giving some of the mic holders uh, uh, Club Lions as well. So that'll be... Yeah, you've got some you've got some lions coming your way, undoubtedly. 
yeah that'll, true. that'll be really cool uh, uh people will be excited about that and it'll it'll be great to get some people from my community into your community and and vice versa so yeah. uh, i'm excited about that thank you absolutely absolutely let's have a look let's have a look at the mic buster let's see what we're working with it's not out yet it's not out. Ah, yet. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be a surprise when when this Ooh. drops. Um, but there will be two. One goes to you, and then one one goes public as as for every episode. So uh, I'll I'll send it to you though. Um, and uh, great, I think that covers everything. Everybody, you got to check out their beta launch uh, coming this Saturday. Uh, SportsIcon.com uh, and Alexi. Thank you so much for joining us here. This was a lot of fun. We covered a lot of ground in, in 30 minutes. We absolutely did, but that's the NFT space, isn't it? Yeah, we, so, were saying, yeah. we were saying before too, one day equals one week in the NFT space. So we're all yeah. really like 200 years old at this point. <laughs> <laughs> we're aging quicker than dogs at the moment. I think, I think that's how it works in the <laughs> NFT space. I swear, because you've got 15-year-olds who are millionaires. So there's only one way to explain it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that made that made sense. That makes perfect sense. And yeah, thank thanks for having thanks for having me on. Um, as you said, beta launch 15, 16th, and then the marketplace will be rolling out as well towards the end of end of the month. Also, I love it. Well, for everybody else, we'll see you next time. Peace.